Hi, hello in the third activity of this course of preparing a business plan. We are working on learning or we, we are learning how to prepare a good business plan. And this is activity number three uh, entitled goal setting. Now, in this video, there will be one difference as compared to two previous activities. So as prepared to pitching and business modeling. This time, in the same video, I will mm, combine the instructional part, so what you should do, the description of what you are supposed to do in that practice, and my own demonstration of how I do it. Uh, this is pretty much intuitive. I decided to combine these two in one video because it somehow goes together for me. I couldn't even explain exactly why. But well, this is another thing you can learn when you learn how to work with your brain. Sometimes things just nail themselves down and there is no telling. Okay? So, I pass first of all to the instructional part. So, to, uh, to the PowerPoint presentation. One remark, uh, this activity, so the activity of goal setting, is strongly connected with the two other activities which follow, risk assessment and planning. Uh, so try to work through all the three with the same business concept. Uh, so try to tie them, uh, these three somehow together. Okay, so now the basic principles. Uh, first of all, why do I show you this specific uh, practice or this specific method of goal setting? Because I could notice, because I know I could observe it in my classes with students at the university, that this, uh, this thing simply works. It is just something that works, I don't even quite I, I, I couldn't even quite say why it works the way it works, but I noticed that when I run my students through the sequence of questions, which you will see on the next slide, it is sort of a trigger. It just opens them up. They start um, like phrasing out their goals, their concepts, their strategies in a much more articulated way as compared to what they could do before. It is like a bottle opener. You take that cork off and you can just power the liquid from the, from the bottle. And hopefully it is good wine. So, so that goal setting practice is field tested. Uh, it is really like thought provoking for you so it is quite normal when you go through it on your own, when you practice it, it is quite normal that, that you feel like a sudden excitement. It's normal. Okay? Important thing. It is important to be honest and concrete in your answers. So focus on real life situations rather than dreams or ideas. I give you an example. You might tell, I want to be the best in my industry. This is, an, uh, this is a dream. This is an idea. Uh, without really thorough market research, you cannot really say what does it mean to be the best in your industry. Uh, besides, uh, everybody in the industry wants to be the best. So it is very much like a self, uh, self obliterating forecast when you say that you want to be the best. On the other hand, when you say something, I want to earn enough money in three years to buy a house. This sounds very simplistic, very like down to earth, uh, like painfully practical, yet it is a goal that you can like put your anchor in. It, it, such a goal, phrased out as a, like a precise, possible to describe uh, state of things, 
It has that strange property of provoking your thoughts into articulated planning of your business. So let's go through the questions because that's the core of it, really. I will make myself small now, even smaller, okay? And let's go through those questions. So name a business concept or use something you have created through pitching or through business modeling. You can, you don't have to, but you can, okay? Let's go. So question or the set of questions that comes the first. What exactly do you want in five years from now? What kind of state, position or situation do you want to find yourself in? I am very specific here. Describe a state of things, a situation, not a dream, not an idea, but a situation which you can like imagine. Now you think what could happen in five years from now? What would be the best scenario for me to happen during those five years? And try really to like visualize, describe yourself in those five years from now. Set of questions number two. How will you know you will have reached what you want? What kind of benchmarks, metrics or confirmations will you use to say I have what I wanted to have? So at this point you nail down like let's say the like, like those pegs uh, dug in the ground, those orientation points, your references. It is important to, once again here to be both uh, insightful and very practical. Name the things that have to be there in order to like, make your big goals come true. And finally, the third string of questions. How will other people know you have what you aspired for? What kind of criteria are they likely to use when appraising your achievement? Uh, I noticed when I worked with my students and when I used the sequence of questions for myself as well, uh, that when I ask myself those, th those three sets of questions in this precise order, what exactly do I want? How will I know that I have what I want? And how will other people know that I have what I want? It, ser it, it has that peculiar property of triggering my brain into a special mode of thinking. R really pragmatic and sort of projecting myself into my goals. And this is a very important thing to know. That this technique... Excuse me, I am meddling a little bit with, the, with those frames. So this technique is you, your personality, projected into the business concept you work with. So sum up your answers to those three strings of questions. Write them all down. Write them down on paper or write them down uh, in a computer file, I mean in a digital file, but write them down. It is important, really. It works only when you write it down. You can even record it as an audio and, or video, and then you can review it, and uh, it is another possible option. But the important thing is that it's, is once you write it down, to go back and pass in review whatever you have written or recorded as your answer to those questions. So that would be all in the presentation. And now we go sort of live, pure beef. So this is my notepad, goal setting. And the business concept that I'm working with is essentially the same uh, that you could see uh, in my previous training or demonstration activities. So my general business concept is that I want to start 
a manufacturing business where I would make small electric turbines, wind and hydroelectric turbines. So essentially uh, designed and made for renewable sources of energy. Let me just see if it is well visible in the window. Okay, and now we go like really live. I will write down my answers to those questions. You will see how it can unfold when you do it. So what exactly do I want in five years from now? What kind of state, position or situation do I want to find myself in? Okay, so assuming that I start this manufacturing business. Now, I, in five years, I want to own the land where the business is located. I know it looks strange. It is not like immediately associated with uh, what you could think of as typical business goals, yet it is what comes spontaneously to my mind, that I want land. I, I want to be the owner of the land where the business is located. It is strange, once again, or it could seem strange, but this is, but this is me projected into my business concept. Another thing that I want, I want to be sure that I act ethically. I know it might sound a little bit grandstanding, but, it is, but this is simply that ethical action uh, is simply that I, something that I noticed about myself in many contexts. I am slightly opportunistic, so I really suffer emotionally when I am in durable conflict with other people. So acting ethically is, uh, let's say, like a, uh, is like a special confirmation or like a good background for me to unfold a long-term strategy. Okay, let's return to my notepad. And how will I know I will have reached what I want? What kind of benchmarks, metrics or confirmations will I use to say I have what I wanted to have? Now, there is a part at this point which logically uh, comes from what I answered to the first string of questions. Yet there is something else that is like bubbling in my mind. Let me write it down and show it to you. So, of course, I need property rights as regards the land. Okay, cool. Now, the next thing I will know I have the land I wanted when the land is in some remote countryside side location. I want to see fields around and not an industrial zone. Funny? Yes, it, it, it could be funny, but this is like really me projected into my business goals, into my business concept. So you can see that what comes out of those quick notes is that my business concept will be definitely involving the acquisition of land, the acquisition of real estate. When we will go through activities pertinent to financial planning, you will see that it plays a role, right? Uh, and then probably I want that land in some like nice countryside place. 
logically it involves that I will have to go through a small uh, like uh, legal battle because locating a manufacturing business or manufacturing activity in the strictly speaking countryside is not easy. Hmm? In most countries, especially in Europe, we have that uh, public policy called zoning, where you have fields, you don't have industry. So I will have to find those like sweet spots, maybe at the limit of small towns and their surrounding countryside where such zones of like manufacturing and countryside in the same time are possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, now question number three or set of questions number three. How will other people know I have what I aspired for? What kind of criteria are they likely to use when appraising my achievement? Here, I know that I need to derive a steady cash flow from the business in order to assure others that it works. Another conclusion in five years from now, I want a good or a good net cash flow. Usually mm, by that I mean a good operational cash flow. So the op operations in themselves, so the manufacturing operations where I would make those small wind turbines and small hydroelectric turbines, it has to derive like a clearly positive cash flow. Just to go a little bit ahead, the operational cash flow in a business is usually the sum total of amortization of fixed assets, so mostly the amortization of equipment and net income after taxes. These two pulled together have to give like a nice positive operational cash flow in five years from now. And I need to be publicly recognized in my achievement. Narcissistic, I know, yet I am a little bit narcissistic. It might be the reason why I record those educational videos just to show myself. But I know that I, I will know that I nailed it when some kind of public, some kind of audience, maybe like an organization, a council, a government, whoever, when they like publicly recognized, Vasniewski nailed it. He has this manufacturing business, it is working well, it is ethical, okay. Hmm. So you could like see what that goal setting uh, looks like when done in uh, like real time, when you practice it by yourself. Try to emulate the style Without false modesty, I can say that I have gone through that specific scheme of goal setting so many times uh, that I have learned like to do it intuitively, quickly, expeditively, without waiting too long. Okay, so that would be all in that uh, video about goal setting. I invite you to follow other activities in that course of business planning. And till then, practice, practice, practice and have fun with life and have fun with science. Bye.